Hey guys, Laney Flit here, and today I want to talk about a country with a very interesting history in the Eurovision Song Contest, the country that I like to call the Black Sheep of Europe. Now, if you had asked me in December of 2016 to name one country that would never, ever, ever win Eurovision, it would not have taken me much time to respond. Portugal, of course. But a few months later, I would have promptly eaten my words when Portugal did in fact win Eurovision with the handsome crooner Salvador Sobral's song Amar Pelush Doi. It was a stunning victory that was 53 years in the making. In fact, Portugal holds a very dubious record in Eurovision. The longest time between a country's debut in the contest and their first victory. It took Portugal 53 years from their debut at Eurovision 1964 to finally win in 2017. This broke the record of 45 years set by Finland, who took from 1961 to 2006. Why did it take Portugal so long to finally win? How did they capture lightning in a bottle in 2017? Is another win in their future? I don't have definitive answers to these questions, but to get an idea, we'll need to take a look at Portugal's history in the Eurovision Song Contest. Musically, Portugal has always been a bit different from the rest of Europe. They're Europe's black sheep or red-headed stepchild, if you will. Why is this? It stems from Portugal's very unique national selection, Festival da Canção. This is a contest whose name translates simply as Song Festival, or more literally, Festival of Songs. Festival da Canção was first held in 1964 and has since been held every single year that Portugal has participated in Eurovision. Each year, the song that wins Festival da Canção goes on to represent Portugal at Eurovision. Festival da Canção is different from most other national selection contests in a few ways. The most key way it's different is RTP's mission in holding the contest in the first place. Most countries see their national selection process as a way to choose the song that has the best chance of winning Eurovision, but RTP believes that's more of a vehicle to represent Portuguese music and culture on an international stage. If you look at Portugal's past entries, many of them are simply odes to Portugal and Portuguese culture. In 1977, Portugal was represented at Eurovision by the group Os Amigos with the song Portugal no Coração or Portugal in My Heart. The song was a patriotic anthem praising Portugal as a nation that wants to give a hand to everybody and to be friends. It finished 18th place. Conquistador, Portugal's 1989 entry, was of ode to the former glory of the Portuguese Empire and its possessions in Brazil, Angola, and Timor. It finished 16th. In 1996, their entry, O Meu Coração Não Tem Cor, or My Heart Has No Color, was an ode to Portuguese culture and referenced several Portuguese and Brazilian dances by name. Their 1998 entry, Se Eu Te Pudes Abraçar, If I Could Embrace You, is about missing Portugal while traveling in a foreign land. It came in 12th. With the exception of 1996, which was Portugal's most successful entry prior to 2017, none of these songs scored particularly well. While Odes to Portugal were popular with RTP and the Portuguese people, it's clear that the rest of Europe did not feel the same way. In 1986, a singer named Dora won Festival de Canção with her song Now Seja Schmal Pra Mim, or Don't Be Bad To Me. Both the song and its English translation, You're Hurting Me, were immensely popular in Portugal. Dora became one of the biggest figures on the Portuguese music scene overnight. 
The song placed 14th at Eurovision, but even so, Dora was so popular in Portugal that she was once again selected to represent Portugal at Eurovision two years later, in 1988. Her song, Volterai, or I'll Come Back, finished 18th with just five points. This story is just to show that Portugal's music tastes were a bit out of touch with the rest of Europe's. Now, this was Portugal's history for 53 years, sending songs that were immensely popular in Portugal, but held no appeal for the rest of Europe. Then in 2017, a man by the name of Salvador Sobral burst onto the scene. He won Festival da Canção that year with his song Amar Penustoi, or Love for Both, penned by his sister, Luisa Sobral. Suddenly, a country that had never finished top five was topping the list of odds of countries most likely to win. Why was Salvador Sobral so popular? To answer that question, I'd like to compare him to winners from two other countries known for sending ethnic songs, Greece and Turkey. If you want to know what ethnic Greek or ethnic Turkish music sounds like, just listen to any of their Eurovision entries from the 1970s, 80s, or 90s. Similar to Portugal, Greece and Turkey were abject failures for most of those decades. They sent songs that were popular in their own countries, but held no appeal for the rest of Europe. But by the end of the 90s and the early 2000s, they had figured out how to find songs that had crossover appeal while still maintaining ethnic elements. In 1997, Turkey came third with the song Dinle, or Listen, by Shebnam Peker, which was a fast-paced, up-tempo number that included finger cymbals and a Turkish backing band. In 2001, Greece came in third with the song Die For You by Antique, another fast-paced pop song that included Greek language verses and traditional Greek instruments. Clearly, it was possible to find ethnic songs that had crossover appeal. Then in the span of three years, both Greece and Turkey captured lightning in a bottle. Turkey won Eurovision 2003 with the song Every Way That I Can by Sir Tabar Renner, and two years later, Greece won with the song My Number One by Helena Paparizou. However, Portugal was never able to find the same success these two countries had with crossover appeal. Now, Salvador Sobral was a very appealing artist. He was a handsome young lad with a voice made for crooning. Unlike previous Portuguese entries, his song, Amar Pelustoi, had all the crossover appeal of Helena Paparizu and Sir Taba Renner. The song stays true to its Portuguese roots, while still being a ballad that sounds familiar to fans of the French ballad. Once Salvador went out and nailed the performance, his victory was an inevitability. Portugal won Eurovision, something I never thought I'd live to see. Will Portugal win again in the future? I doubt it. 2017 was a clear case of capturing lightning in a bottle. Portugal's entries since then, mostly being flops, show that they're not ready to be a consistent contender. I would be very surprised if they were to win again in the near future, but hey, I could end up eating my words in a few months, just like last time. Before I wrap this video up, I want to quickly talk about Portugal's most recent entry, Love is on My Side by the Black Mamba, because it's such a huge departure from any of Portugal's other entries. For the first time in history, Portugal sent a song that was entirely in English. While most countries began singing in English after the EBU dropped the language rule in 1999, Portugal had always continued singing in Portuguese, consistent with their goal of showcasing Portuguese culture to Europe. I'm not sure why they suddenly decided to send a song in English, but I, I do wonder if it's a sign of things to come. It's also the first Portuguese entry I can think of that lacks any elements of ethnic Portuguese music. It's more of a straight-up pop song than a Portuguese pop crossover. And if anything, it's really a country pop crossover. 
It, it sounds even more European country than the common Linnets. If love is on my side as a sign of things to come, things could be drastically different for Portugal in the future. Now, thanks for listening to my video on one of the most fascinating countries in Eurovision, and hopefully now you understand why I called Portugal the black sheep of Europe, and I, I do apologize if I mispronounced any Portuguese names or words.